So, let us continue our deep dive into viscoelasticity of uh, polymers and uh, while we are discussing properties of uh, viscoelasticity at different times, temperatures, frequencies, uh, in this particular lecture we will focus on uh, high strain rates and uh, high strain rates is when uh, impact and the energy absorption capability of uh, polymeric materials is very important uh, and uh, application wherever you want to prevent uh, the energy transfer due to impacts. So, where the material should absorb the energy uh, and uh, so in some sense these are sacrificial materials. So, they absorb the energy, they might uh, start fracturing, they might uh, get damaged, but uh, this is classically what is expected of a helmet also. So, which is an energy absorbing material on impact. So, polymers are used uh, very strong, uh, very uh, uh, commonly in these applications uh, because of their uh, strength in terms of uh, high impact properties. So, we will discuss these properties by keeping their applications in mind by first uh, examining the phenomena of energy absorption and then uh, specific testing which is done to assess the capability of energy absorption in polymeric materials by uh, doing what is called impact testing. And so, uh, generally the rates of loading is, is an important factor. Uh, how high is the rate of uh, stress or strain application. And in fact, uh, this can lead to the behavior changing and uh, we have already discussed this that at low temperature you might see a very brittle material, but at high temperature you might see a flexible and uh, uh, soft material. And so, if you go to high temperature or you go to uh, low strain rates, uh, basically these mechanisms of uh, molecular slippage and orientation start happening and eventually failure happens. But at low temperature or very high strain rates, the slippage and orientation all of these processes cannot take place because the rate of fluid loading is very high. So, consequently what happens is the molecular breakage uh, are some of the association, uh, some of the phenomenon which has to happen for uh, failure to happen. And uh, just to give you an idea of how different rates are. Uh, you know the uh, bus or truck or uh, car or uh, two wheeler uh, velocities are uh, 10 to 30 meters per second. Uh, when we do static testing, we are uh, doing it at uh, fairly low velocities or the strain rate are uh, 10 to the power minus 1 and uh, lower. Impact testing on the other hand is at much higher loads. And of course, uh, this is where uh, let us say uh, accidents or uh, something which falls this is where impact may be of relevance. But we also have ballistic impact uh, in, in case of a bomb explosion, in case of a bullet. So, so, there the rates are even more higher and so the velocities are higher and the strain rates are higher. So, generally when we think of impact, it is high strain rate, but not extremely high, which is called ballistic. Uh, so, when we discuss uh, impact, we are going to confine our attention to non-ballistic, so high strain rates, but more from the point of view of impact uh, to some uh, collision or impact due to uh, impact uh, that can material withstand when it falls and so on. So, the, the, there uh, the velocities of 1 to 10 meter per second are typical. And so, uh, we just should remember that uh, failure in the material is because of the existing defects that are already there in the material. There will be voids, there may be some micro cracks during processing. Uh, because of uh, aging effects in the material, certain amount of defects may have accumulated. So, all of this is always there in the material. And uh, when process of failure and fracture starts happening, in case of macromolecules, macromolecules have to start breaking. So, bond rupture or uh, overcoming the covalent bond energy between different monomers is a key uh, phenomenon which has to happen for fracture to take place. And of course, uh, by overcoming the secondary interactions, we can also have uh, other processes which again are precursors to eventual failure. So, overcoming secondary en interaction energy is also important. So, failure involves all of these and uh, this probably can then give you an idea as to why rates matter because depending on the rate which is there, some of these will take place and some of this may not. So, depending on the kinds of defects which are there in the material, depending on what are the segmental flexibilities and whether slippage and disentanglement is possible or not, the overcoming of secondary interaction may be possible in a given rate uh, 
of loading or it may not be possible. So, therefore, different lay rates of loading lead to different kind of mechanical response from the material. So, generally therefore, a failure process is uh, take the defects and molecular mechanisms together and leads to certain microstructural features, which could be a micro crack, which could be a void, which could be a shear yielded zone or crazing in the materials. And eventually, uh, when accumulation of these happens, uh, a crack starts. And uh, generally, we try to distinguish as a micro crack and a macro crack. So, macro crack is when the failure is imminent and then this crack can grow leading to failure. So, this phenomenon can be uh, analyzed using the stress strain curve also that we have discussed earlier. Because if you remember, uh, we had discussed uh, stress as a function of strain and uh, depending on the kind of materials you have, stress strain may vary. And uh, we had also talked about the overall energy uh, which is involved in the stress strain curve is basically some amount of a measure of uh, how much energy can the material absorb before it eventually fails. So, a perfect brittle material uh, will have only elastic energy associated. So, if at all uh, let us say we have a material which is a perfectly brittle material, basically till failure there is only elasticity involved. But uh, on the other hand, uh, many of the polymeric materials will have other processes which are uh, viscous and plastic. And so, crack propagation and uh, how the crack grows is very different in these two materials. But generally, lot of fracture mechanics uh, initial uh, uh, concepts are developed based on elasticity or elastic materials, but many of these have been now extended to viscous and plastic materials. Because near the crack, what happens is very different in case of an elastic material, which has only energy storing capacity. while for a viscous plastic material, there is energy dissipation and structural rearrangement of macromolecules is possible. So, given that uh, there are several ways in which we can analyze uh, this uh, fracture phenomena. Uh, one is by looking at uh, what is called a critical strain energy release rate and this is factor G. It is basically energy per unit fracture area. So, one measure we saw earlier which was based on stress strain curve and the overall integral of that. But that is uh, completely talking about elastic, plastic, all of the deformations and overall energy involved. But more importantly, we would like to know that given there is a crack growing in the material and crack implies that some area of the material is getting exposed. Because crack is nothing but uh, generating new surface in the material. So, what is the energy absorbed per unit area of this crack surface which is opening up? So, that is why energy per unit fracture area is uh, quantified using this variable called critical strain energy release. The other way we analyze this problem is by looking at what is called stress intensity factor, which is basically uh, the stress intensity near a crack. Because near a crack, uh, there are there is a singularity, there is a point at which uh, there is one phase and then there is another. Uh, so, crack is basically nothing but uh, here. So, this is uh, open uh, surfaces of the material and here is the bulk material. So, at the crack tip basically stresses get intensified and that is what is quantified using stress intensity and it is a factor called Kic. So, using both of these approaches we can look at the fracture phenomena, what happens when a crack is there in the material, how does the crack grow what is the energy required for uh, stress uh, crack growth in the material and so on. So, these concepts of uh, uh, fracture energy and stress intensity factor we will discuss in a subsequent lecture uh, related to uh, the fracture behavior of polymers. Uh, in this particular lecture, we will focus more on the impact properties which are loading at a, a range which is not very high so that it is ballistic or it is not low, so that uh, we get uh, the overall uh, stress strain curves in the material. And generally, the impact stress uh, strength is as measured using uh, trade tests. So, these are tests where uh, Charpy and Izod, where you take a specimen of a given dimension and subject it to a particular test and get the numbers in terms of impact strength. So, before we look at impact strength, let us look at an example uh, application material. So, we polycarbonate and ABS. 
acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, uh, this uh, blend copolymer system uh, are very popular in terms of application. Uh, just to highlight uh, the difference, uh, blend is basically a mixture of two polymers. So, you can have miscible blend, partially miscible, immiscible blend. Generally, we refer to alloy whenever we have an immiscible polymers, but we have done some compatibilization between these two phases. So, that is why uh, compatibilized or compatible immiscible polymer blends. So, even though the two polymers are immiscible, at the interface, there is some interaction between the macromolecules of one with macromolecules of another. And applications of this polycarbonate ABS alloys are plenty, whether in uh, automotive or appliances, electronics, uh, fused deposition, uh, not really molding, because uh, molding is a common process to be used for polymers, but this is called fused deposition modeling. You can search, this is a very popular technique for 3D, why would you think that it is called modeling? And uh, given that uh, prototyping is a very important manufacturing activity, you will see that this FDM as it is called is used very commonly for prototyping and that will give you a clue as to why this is called modeling. Now, uh, if you look at the individual polymers themselves, so polycarbonate has a nice uh, high class transition temperature. So, it could be used for a wide variety of temperatures and good mechanical strength, but it is very sensitive to how it fails depending on whether there is a notch. Notch is nothing but a predetermined defect which is introduced in the material. And uh, so, for example, if uh, this is a sample, uh, a notch sample is basically where we introduce a defect like that. So, notches can be of several different kinds and practitioners of uh, uh, the measurements of these kind uh, will say that a particular kind of notch gives us much better data which is correlated well with the application that we have. And, and so, uh, notch resistance and notch sensitivity is a key issue related to assessing how good or bad the material may be for a given application. ABS on the other hand uh, is uh, very nice in terms of processability, it's the viscosity and uh, how it processes into complex shape is all uh, very reasonably manipulated and you can have a good control over processability of ABS. Its impact strength is also high, though its uh, overall strength in terms of tensile strength or flexural strength may not be high, impact properties are very good. And it is also fairly notch insensitive, but of course, it has a low glass transition temperature. And this is how then blending is done. Given that uh, each of them seems to have certain strengths and weaknesses, can we not combine them and get a tunable blend? Uh, in this case, a tunable alloy also because they are compatible uh, at the interface, we can get basically PC ABS blends and alloys. And generally, we have these ABS particles which are distributed in polycarbonate phase. That is how these uh, blends are arrived at. And uh, because there is a favorable interaction between polycarbonate and styrene acrylonitrile part of ABS, uh, this again you can ascertain by just looking at solubility parameters. They are very close to each other. Solubility parameter of polycarbonate is 19.4 and that of ABS is 21.2. So, therefore, they are uh, reasonably compatible though immiscible. So, that is why they form an immiscible blend, but they are compatible at the interfaces due to some selective interactions between chains of polycarbonate and chains of styrene acrylin, acrylonitrile part of the ABS macromolecular system. So, let us look at now uh, how is impact strength measured. Basically, what we do is uh, we take a load and then make it fall, make it impact a sample. So, I could keep this as a sample and then I have a load which is let us say tied uh, with a liver and if I leave it, it will going to come and impact here and that is what is uh, shown here. So, it is a striker which is released from a certain height. So, we know what is the potential energy that it will gain in terms of arriving at a kinetic energy and therefore, we will know what is the velocity of impact. So, impact testers will generally have uh, different types of strikers and uh, different from different heights these strikers can be brought down so that we can vary the impact loading. And the striker uh, basically impacts and uh, given that it impacts the sample and we have introduced a notch, there will be a breakage of the sample. And uh, what we try to do is 
based on the motion of the striker, we can figure out how much of the energy of the striker was absorbed by this material and how much of the energy of striker is still remaining with the striker. Because if let us say the sample was not there, then striker will rise all the way to the other side and again potential energy will be equal when the kinetic energy will go to 0. In this of course, the friction due to air is negligible compared to the energy absorbed by the polymer. So, therefore, uh, just a very simple method with a dial, we can uh, actually ascertain the impact energy uh, or impact strength of the material. So, these are two different tests, uh, one is called the IZOT. Uh, so, you can see here in one case, one side is clamped, in, uh, in case of char p, both the sides are clamped and then the striker hits in the center. And uh, generally, you can do testing with notched or unnotched specimens and uh, this uh, measures of the impact strength uh, sometimes are based on per unit length or per unit area of the crack. So, in case of IZOT test, we do per unit length of the crack. In case of char it is done over per unit area of the crack. And just to give you idea of number, the IZOT test uh, for polystyrene impact strength is 10. But for LDPE, which in fact sometimes may not even break, the numbers are 1000 or above. So, it is huge uh, 3 orders of magnitude, 2, 3 orders of magnitude difference in terms of impact strength of different materials. Same numbers uh, for ABS are uh, 100 to 600. Polycarbonate uh, also has uh, high impact strength, but it is their blend which can give you processability, it can give you notch uh, insensitivity and all of that combined with high strength. And so, impact strength uh, can again be optimized based on the blend. And these are two examples from uh, two different companies and based on the technical data sheet that you can achieve uh, different types of. So, this is a 3D printing grade which has about 196 impact strength and then there is an automotive or a medium flow grade. You can see that the medium flow grade probably is much easier in terms of processing, but it has a lower impact strength. So, depending on where you, this PC ABS blend and alloy is being used, you can then make a judgment about what is the impact strength required and what is the processing ease that is required. So, in general, there are several uh, polymeric materials which are used for uh, impact uh, properties. In ballistic impact, we have famous example of Kevlar or Xylon which are used. Even ultra high molecular weight polyethylene used in extremely demanding applications because all the polyethylene chains uh, which are completely linear are uh, organized uh, and oriented uh, and crystallites so that we get very high properties. Similarly, high impact polystyrene. So, this is polystyrene as we saw the impact strength is very less, but if we introduce rubber particles in this, so we get high impact polystyrene because the rubber particles can play the role of um, uh, being stop, uh, stoppers for the crack growth. And a similar idea is also exploited in toughened epoxy, where epoxy and rubber particles are put together to increase the toughness or impact strength of epoxy materials is used in composites in aerospace applications. So, there are several examples and you can see that uh, most of these cases, it is the rubber particles which are being incorporated into a polymer, another polymeric material to enhance its impact property. So, it is again rubber, just the way rubber is a very good damping material, rubber is a very good crack arrester also. Uh, and it can do this job by having interfaces in the material where crack now has to go longer distance, but it can also absorb the energy itself because it allows segmental flexibility. So, with this uh, we will close the, the discussion related to the impact testing of polymers. Thank you.